Welcome to this midweek thought, and we're going to be in Colossians chapter 3 very shortly. Um, with the joy of a new baby and the um, slight uh, logistical challenge of a new baby in lockdown, it's been great to have some paternity leave and some uh, partial childcare furlough, which I'm on at the moment and very grateful for. But it's fair to say that my um, avenues for serving the Lord have changed lately. So uh, not so much sermon preparation, not so much opening the Bible with church family members, which I ordinarily love to do, and um, more time with the boys, more time in the kitchen, some different ways to serve the Lord. And it's tempting at times to think that I'm doing less to serve him. And uh, I think this, this uh, message for the Colossian slaves is a corrective to that way of thinking. And Paul says to the Colossian slaves, obey your earthly masters, work hard for him. And then he says in verse 24 of chapter 3, the last sentence, verse 24, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. Uh, maybe there was a temptation for Colossian slaves to think uh, like this. Well, we've got ordinary and um, very tiring jobs to be doing. Um, we serve the Lord after we finish work, but we've just got to grind out our working day. Maybe they spoke to the elders of the church in Colossae and envied them and thought, well, it's all right for you. You get to be serving the Lord all the time. We have to grind out this working day and then we can think about serving him. Uh, but Paul punctures that way of thinking and he tells the Colossian slaves, verse 24, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. The Lord Christ, this divine Son, through whom the red planet that we've been seeing on our TV screens was made. Um, the King appointed over all people for all time. The King who died for us on the cross because he loves us and because he wants us to be welcome in his kingdom. As the Christian slaves of Colossae worked, they were working for that King for the Lord Jesus Christ himself. They were serving him in their work as slaves. So in some ways, their, their work as slaves, some of it would have been quite lowly. And yet the one whom they were serving could not have been more exalted and glorious. And so maybe like me, you need the encouragement not to compartmentalise your life. Yes, there's a work versus rest balance to be struck. That is a God-given thing. But there isn't a serving the Lord versus serving myself balance to be struck. Or a serving the Lord versus not serving the Lord balance to be struck. Paul doesn't want the Colossian slaves to divide life up like that. He says your work is a slave well, you are serving the Lord Christ. So your work as a registrar of a hospital or your work writing computer code, or your work caring for one child with special educational needs, or your work on the phone taking bookings for a holiday company. That is a chance to serve the Lord Christ. And not just paid work, applying the principle out further, and this is where I found it helpful recently, the work of loading the dishwasher, the work of changing a nappy, the work of chatting to a housemate or a child after a hard day. The work of praying for a home group member. The work of driving someone to a hospital appointment. The work of inviting a friend to this week's Taster Sunday. In all of those things we can say to ourselves, we should say to ourselves, it is the Lord Christ I'm serving. And as I've mulled over this verse, I think it, it gives me both rebuke and reinvigoration. I can put it like that. It gives me a rebuke because when I'm not doing something immediately exciting, when I'm doing something unnoticed, maybe quite uh, menial, quite ordinary, something with no direct and immediate consequences or discernible impact on God's kingdom, I'm still serving the Lord Christ. That is how I should see myself. That should be my attitude. Uh, it means I should be serving with diligence and integrity and humility eager to serve, not just um, serving resentfully and shoddily. So there is a rebuke because I'm serving the Lord Christ in whatever work he's called me to. But secondly, there's reinvigoration. 
because in whatever ordinary task there is a, a higher goal, a higher target audience if you like. Um, as I work in whatever way I work, as you work in whatever way you work, it is a chance to serve him and to please him. I guess that means the manner in which we seek to work will be different, uh, whether it means working hard to be gentle with um, whining children so that we please the Lord in that way, or whether we seek to be godly amongst gossiping colleagues to please him in that way, or not cutting colleagues, not cutting corners uh, when other colleagues are. So it'll change the way we um, seek to serve, our attitude, because we're serving the Lord Christ. And it's also invig reinvigorating, I think, because as we dwell on the privilege of serving him in whatever we're doing, uh, well, maybe we'll just speak of him that bit more, because the heart, from the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. And if our heart is focused on the privilege of serving him in whatever we happen to be doing, well, maybe we'll be quicker to speak of him to uh, children or to neighbours or to colleagues, whoever it is, um, if we're focused on the privilege of serving the Lord Christ. We want to be living for him and speaking for him. Let me lead us in a prayer. Father, you are sovereign over each one of our lives and you're sovereign over the work that you've called us to do. Maybe for some of us the coronavirus season has changed the nature of that work or made some aspects of it harder. Please would you help us to um, see ourselves as your servants in every situation, to feel the privilege of serving your son in every situation and to um, seek to do that therefore diligently and wholeheartedly, seeking your pleasure trusting in your reward and please would you also liberate us from uh, the false burden of seeking to serve ourself alone or our wallet alone or our reputation alone thank you that we have a higher purpose to serve the lord christ please help us to think of him and to be rejoicing in him as we work amen <laughs>